Welcome back to the UGF Pandas. I'm a little hoarse this episode. If you saw the national championship episode, I'm sure you understand why. I'm recording that immediately after that, so yeah. Gonna be a little low energy. I'm gonna be sounding like uh, an old grandma this episode, but the show must go on. I'll try to be as hype as I can with a, a old dying throat. But anyways, yeah, we won the big one. 14-0. <coughs> I told you I'm dying. Head coaches don't get days off, and neither do YouTubers. We always gotta start the off-season episodes with the players leaving. L dude, I was just emotional about winning the national championship about 10 minutes ago. I don't need- well, for you guys it was like a whole day, or maybe a week, I don't know, it takes forever to upload these things. Oh, would you look at that? We have a few players declaring for the draft. Jimmy Williams is one of them. Sam McDonald's projected to go in the second round. Oh, my man, you, you've made me so proud. I never thought Sam McDonald would be the first one drafted into the NFL. I thought Jimmy Williams was going to project to the NFL. I thought he'd do better than round five, but that's fine. I think we had Ken Burks coming in. He was going to be a great quarterback, so Obadiah Scott's going to transfer due to playing time. I don't blame him, especially with the recruits we got coming in. Actually kind of clears up my roster a little bit, so that's fine. Rayshon Tanner, he's going to go undrafted, but I think he'll he'll make a roster somewhere. He's an amazing return specialist. Closer look at Rayshon Tanner, though. My goodness. All the way back to early vintage Rayshon Tanner. I vividly remember that spin move he put on FCS the first time we played them in Season 2. Oh my god! Holy! If this was a Twitch stream, somebody clip it! That was amazing! Freaking half ends! Longest kick return in NCAA history! He juked out three people at the same time. You better believe that's going on the thumbnail, boys. My God. Yeah, look at the crowd. I didn't even know we had chest painters in the rain nonetheless. That seems like a terrible idea. That has to be like implanted on everyone's brain. That was amazing. That's probably one of the best highlights we will ever get in this series. I'm glad he finally got an award to best returner. Look at those return skills. Like the best kick returner I've ever played with in NCAA by far. Three kick returns his senior season, two his sophomore season. Oh yes, oh yes, Tanner. Go, keep running. All the way. Touchdown, Rayshon Tanner. 102 yard kick return. That gives us a lot more breathing room. My God, I was stressing out over this game. We were supposed to blow him out. Do your thing. Oh, there we go, Rayshon Tanner special is back. Oh my goodness. Oh, you would fumble it, Tanner. How many fumbles are we going to have this game? That's a third one already. That's a beautiful cut, and that's a good block on the outside. He's dangerous on these returns. Keep chucking away, Rayshon Tanner. It's been so long since we've had a kick return. And that one's the longest in NCAA history. 103 yards. We've missed you, buddy. Welcome back to the Rayshon Tanner special. It's a short kickoff. Rayshon Tanner is a dangerous return, man. This is a good return so far. Oh, look at the fullback laying people out. Todd Mitchell giving me the block downfield. Opening kickoff return. Second kickoff return of the season for Rayshon Tanner. What a perfect way to start this game. Give me another cut. Let's go, Tanner. I'll run him. Let's go, Tanner! This will be his third kick return of the season! And he gets it done! Avoiding the last guy! Dude is a sensational kick returner. We ended up redshirting him because I recognized that Jeff Warren was an elite player, so I had to utilize him as much as possible. So I didn't want Rayshon Tanner just sitting on the bench, wasting his eligibility. Got some solid use out of him, his redshirt senior season. Oh, Tanner, he's got, he's got blocks downfield. Give him the special. Who gave him the juke? Touchdown, Rayshon Tanner. Instead of hitting him with the spin, he just said, let's try the juke out for size. And guess what? He can do that too. Tying the game here up in Knoxville. What the fuck was that? Pitch, Rayshon Tanner. The special to start the game. 
One play on defense, we force a turnover. One play on offense, we score a touchdown. Do not play the Pandas in the Adama Dome. We are unstoppable. Okay. Oh, whoa, Rayshon Tanner. My goodness, man. You are a beast. Okay, that was a dirty spin move, and that one was also a beautiful one. If only it was a touchdown. Come on, Tanner, stay on your feet. We got some amazing blocks. Holy moly. They stood no chance. That's not even a Rayshon Tanner highlight. That is a O-line highlight. Let's see that one again. Holding, maybe, possibly, but it doesn't matter. We got six points. Go with another handoff. The double juke! And the hesitation against the number two team in the country, Rayshon Tanner, finally decided to show up. And it wasn't the spin move this time. 17 rushing touchdowns over 1,000 rushing yards. 21 broken tackles, only one fumble. But in case you're curious about his final player skills, 96 overall, 92 speed, 99 acceleration. But I think the biggest thing you need to look at here is that, where, where is it? That 99 spin move, of course. He even got 99 stamina, which is actually kind of rare for players. Oh, that's right. In season one, he was a corner, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. We, we converted him over. Let's go look at his defensive stats. Two picks that first year we existed. Three deflections, one forced fumble, 24 total tackles. That's mine, Tanner. Go, go, go. Whoa. Whoa, he got flipped. I accidentally pressed the catch button twice and dude got flipped. That's the guy's first incompletion of the game and it's an interception for Tanner. Way to hold on to it through that hit though. That is impressive. He really wasn't a bad defensive player. We just kind of needed him more at running back. I saw like the 90 spin move. So I was like, let's do it anyway. And look where we are now. Ray Sean Tanner was a fan favorite. Everybody was yelling at me that I didn't give him more carries, but I did. He did the best he could out there. He's a good player. Oh yeah, he randomly has 94 strength, which is pretty bananas for a halfback. Ray Sean Tanner, or should I say Ray Spin Tanner, Jimmy Williams. He only had one real season that he played. Right as we started recruiting this guy, we knew he was going to be special. He had significant arm strength better than anyone we had on our roster. He was accurate, as you could tell. 34 touchdowns to 8 picks. Most of the picks were just because my dumb decisions. What a throw. Ronnie Reddick actually made a catch. And it's a touchdown. That window was so tiny to make that throw. Jamie Williams is so talented. Oh, I don't see anybody. He breaks off this one though. He's still on his feet. Jamie Williams scrambling around for the touchdown. That's some awesome stuff. He fumbled it on the last drive, and then he goes beast mode, scrambling in for the touchdown. Let's see, can he get over there? To the back of the end zone. What a freaking cannon! Jimmy Williams, as he got hit, throws a missile across the field. To the back corner of the end zone is Sam McDonald for six. That's the kind of arm talent we've been missing these past few seasons. At the okay, I don't want to force that. Okay, I see Daniel Sanders, or he was. And now he is again. Throw on the run. Bullet. Well, that's Sam McDonald. Doesn't matter. 31 yards downfield. Jimmy football. This guy can sling it. He's streaking to the end zone. He beat his safety. Damon Harris wide open. 42 yards. Man, I'm glad I stared that receiver down. Paid off the wheel route. What a dot from Jimmy football. They're coming. They're coming fast. So look at this, Jimmy Williams. Can he make it? Rushes in for the touchdown, 28 yards. Not known as a guy who improvises a lot, but that's what he did there. That was beautiful. A little hint of Will Horton on that run. Pull that one to the corner of the end zone. Sanders, Jimmy football threw some hate at him. Corner didn't even have time to react. Uh-oh. Just gonna scramble with Jimmy Williams. Zooming around the safety, he broke one. That's a big gain, 24 yards. Deep downfield. What a throw. That is some intense confidence from a quarterback to lob it in between the safeties. Now he throws it. And Sanders has got a first down so close to the line of scrimmage. And he throws a dot on the run. Nobody stands in our way now. And we finally are ACC Conference Champions. Raise it up, coach. Float that up. What a beautiful pass. 
enough for the first down. And with that throw, Jimmy Williams breaks Will Horton's school record for passing yards in a season. Holds a school record for passing yards in a season. Probably would break the school record for passing yards in a career if he was able to play more. Good old Jimmy football. 91 throw power, 91 accuracy. I'm actually pretty shocked he's going all the way in the fifth round. I thought he was a better player than that, but eh, what do I know though? Jimmy Williams got us a national championship, so of course we love the kid. Stepping up in the pocket. To the end zone, Jimmy Williams. Finally, we have points on the board. Make the good throws. Running out for it. Use that sneaky speed, Williams. Cutting back in, slide. Let's go, that's a huge run. We're almost in field goal range just with that alone. On top of the world, we got the crystal ball. Raise that thing up, coach. We did it. Champs, baby, you love to see it. gotta love Jimmy football. Actually very surprised Sam McDonald's projected to go in the second round of the NFL draft. He's a great player. 99 catching, 99 route running. Yes, those are good. But like when I first recruited him, he was like a three-star player. So I didn't expect him to develop into this. I, I wish I had more time with him. I wish I noticed how good he really was earlier because this guy is a beast. Throwing it deep. That's the freshman getting another catch. Freshman getting at it again out there. Oh, look at the move. Can he go the distance? Touchdown. Streaking over on the left side. McDonald beat his man. Able to catch up to him before he can get a touchdown. Launch this one deep in double coverage. McDonald comes down with it. Took a chance and he bailed me out. What a catch from Sam McDonald. I don't care if the clock starts to run. We, he earned this replay. Wow, that was amazing. Sam McDonald has got a blocker downfield. Where's the cuts? Breaks one. Keep going, McDonald. Use your speed. If we needed that last block and that would have been a touchdown. Sam McDonald looking very, very good early. There we go, McDonald. 98 catching. He won't drop it. He'll actually get up and cheese the system. Oh my goodness. Whoa, whoa. I thought he was going to go all the way there. Did he never touch the ground? Launching it to the back of the end zone. Whoa, what a catch. Let's see this one again. See if he's actually in bounds. Okay, he's just celebrating. But I want to see the replay. Was this guy in bounds? The cannon from Jimmy Williams. And yes, Sam McDonald gets it done. Celebrating in the crowd already. We can smell that natty. Oh, that's gonna be intercepted. Oh my god! Holy crap! I I didn't even mean to push the button for real. I was like, nope, interception. I said Daniel Sanders had the catch of the year earlier in the season, but how do you top that? OBJ looking like a sissy compared to that. Maybe we would have gone in the first round if we targeted more, honestly. The smart NFL scouts will notice his lower numbers don't really mean he's a bad player. They'll see the tape, they'll see the route running, the amazing catches, the catches in traffic. He just does everything a receiver needs to do. 11 total touchdowns over his career, three in his senior season. His career high was in his junior season with five. Longest reception, only 50 yards. Honestly, I thought he had a bigger one than that. Tavares Walker, he was one of our first recruits. We, he was an athlete. I didn't really know where he was going to play and he just ended up at left tackle. Yeah, he turned out pretty well, 90 overall by his senior season. Wait, hold up. I didn't even see Tavares Walker was this good. You better believe we're moving him to left tackle. Brandon Montgomery was is one of my favorite defensive players I have ever played with. This guy averaged so many interceptions over his career. Sophomore year, he had nine picks. Senior year, he had eight picks. Heck, in his sophomore year, he had four picks in one game. Third interception of the game for Brandon Montgomery. What a beast. Give this man the Jim Thorpe Award. He's testing him. Make that four. Four interceptions for Brandon Montgomery. This dude's going for an NCAA record. Throw another one his way, please. This is insane. Four interceptions, four user picks for Brandon Montgomery. Two pick sixes over his career, both of them in pretty big games. Montgomery, go, go, go. Avoids it. Average season so far, but it doesn't matter now. 
Do we just kneel it down? Oh, he's gonna die for the end zone. I was gonna go down and try to just kill the rest of the clock, but that works too. I'll take a pick six with Brandon Montgomery. Forced 20 turnovers on the season two. This has been a crazy season for our defense. Oh, to the other side. He threw it off his back foot, Montgomery. He's gonna get an easy pick six. Out of nowhere, this came has just shifted all the way to our side. That is a devastating interception for that guy. His first one of the season is a pick six. Pretty sure he got two interceptions in the game against Georgia where we beat them for the first time. Oh, there's the big play we needed, Montgomery. That was all the CPU, I did none of that. First play in the fourth quarter, picks him off. This is all off the dome too. Like it, that's how memorable these guys are. Pretty high tackle numbers too. 64 in his sophomore season, 54 in junior, and 44 in his senior. 180 total on his career. Oh, he's throwing it deep. Intercepted, Brandon Montgomery. One of the new recruits. I thought he was getting burned, but then he showed out with a nice interception. Nobody's open here. Montgomery swat that out. Excellent. Guy's not even wearing gloves. That's a mistake. Oh, just stuck his helmet right in the man's gut. Will he go? Fowler is there. And he stays in bounds. That'll end the game. Brandon Montgomery, what an absolute beaut. Seal this one up. Get there, Montgomery. Sam Ramirez was like carrying him. I didn't know if he was going to actually catch it. Let's go, guys. Second pick of the game for the defense. 96 speed, 94 acceleration, 99 awareness. Of course, pretty good coverage stats. 88 man, 93 zone. He's a smart player, 91 play rec. 75 catching, which is honestly fantastic for a cornerback. Dang James Jones, one of the only offensive linemen I have highlights for. Just show the freaking bowl game against Georgia. Get it out of your system. Going to the right guard again. We did this last game. fumbled it no this is a joke right four fumbles i guess that's what happens when we give it to our right guard should have known yeah we fumbled it we got cute with it our only bowl loss in school history ah james jones you goofy goober with your weird arm brace things oh picked off didn't see that coming James Jones diving at his hips. Hand this one off to the big boy. That's our left guard. Talk about a fullback. Just hand it to the old lineman. He'll truck anybody for the touchdown. Sam Ramirez isn't going pro either. All right, whatever. Seriously, he's a better coverage guy than Brandon Montgomery. 94 man, 94 zone. Sam Ramirez, he gives you a little space to make him think he's open. And then he picks you off. Third interception of the season for him. Break off of that one, Sam Ramirez. That's too easy for him. Dragging the toes on the sidelines. That's a pick for Ramirez. Holy crap, he's in bounds. Three deflections and now an interception. Dragging the toes, dragging the heels actually on the sidelines. I found him more as like a run stopper, honestly. Like he was a harder hitter than most people would think. Delayed handoff, Noah Curtis strips it out. Oh, he gets rocked by Sam Ramirez. Will he run it? No, he's gonna go short. Brandon Montgomery, that was a wimpy tackle. Sam Ramirez, that was not a wimpy tackle. My goodness. It's a pass. Oh, lay him out, Sam Ramirez. Holy moly, what a hit from Sam Ramirez. He's having a whale of a game. Honestly, might even be able to transition to safety if a team needs it. 10 interceptions in his junior year, which was at one point a record. Definitely increased his tackle numbers his senior season, which is where I found him most valuable. Marcus Kendrick was a great defensive end, but I probably don't have a lot of highlights for him just because it's tough to find those for defensive ends. It's it's just me saying, oh, we got a sack or something. You, you've probably heard it a million times. Nope, they're gonna go for another play, it looks like. And we're gonna sack him. <laughs> School record, four sacks in a game for one player. Oh, wow. Our left end got NCAA Player of the Week last week against FCS. Get there, get there. Let's go! Third and goal! So close to the end zone. 
Whoa, Marcus Kendrick got a speed boost there. Diving for those ankles to get his second sack of the game. Oh, he looks like he got a defensive touchdown his junior year. Let's go find that. Sacked. Oh, he stripped it out. Picked up by the defense. Scoop and score. 31 to 0 in the first half. Go ahead and throw the white flag, Pittsburgh. You're not on the Pandas level. We came to the ACC for some difficult matchups, but I'll take a blowout victory on the road. Hey, there you go. There's your moment. We still loved you, Marcus Kendrick, you 6'8 beast. 86 overall. Here's his stats. I'll scroll up and down for you, just so you can get the gist of it if you want to make these rosters yourself. Noah Curtis, 85 overall. He's also very good. Done a lot of great things for this team. No defensive touchdowns for him, but he was very prolific. 21 total sacks while he was here at UGF. Tried to scramble, but no, Noah Curtis from the defensive tackle spot this time. He was an All-American, did what we had to do to get us that national championship. Todd Mitchell might be the least well-known of the three cornerbacks graduating in this class. He was a solid player though. Six total interceptions on his career, 74 total tackles. He's gonna throw it. Ah, oh, that's Mitchell's all day. He's stepping out of bounds too, but that's four interceptions for us. The most we had in one game last year was two, and we're doubling it here in week one. That's my number nine. The user pick, this one's going to the house too. Mitchell gets the block from Eric Tyson. Two defensive touchdowns in the same game. We have forced 10 turnovers. 10. This is the most terrifying defensive performance I have ever seen. Todd Mitchell stay in bounds. Yes. Launching it deep. That's Todd Mitchell's. Can we get a return here? That's a great cut. Another good cut. Oh, come on, 73. You had to tackle me. I was going to zigzag my way all the way to the end zone. That's 20 turnovers on the season for this defense. He didn't really get the stardom like Brandon Montgomery or Sam Ramirez had. He's still a great press corner and might be able to find a spot on an NFL roster. 98 press, 80 play rec, 60 tackle. Oh man, Tavares Lyles is graduating. I completely forgot. I wish we had more time with him too. He was way more consistent than Ronnie Reddick was, at least in the middle of his career. I can't wait for Kenny Doherty though. That kid's only a freshman. I'm getting ahead of myself though, Tavares Lyles. Let's go check out his stats. Five touchdowns his total career. Three of them in his senior season. 249 yards receiving in his final year. We got X open. Tavares Lyles. Plowing through. Staying on his feet. Fights his way to the end zone. I see the tight end downfield. He got boom. But he has the reception and he has a huge first down for the Pandas. Got X open. He's got it, Tavares Lyles, the tight end getting a touchdown. Did you see that one, Justin Lee? I hope you did, beautiful placement. Can't throw a prettier ball than that. Obviously not a lot of stats jumping off the page, but I, he might be able to slip into the sixth or seventh round as a receiving tight end. Nehemiah freaking Fowler. This was the surprise of the year. One of my favorite players I've used in this entire series. We switched him over from safety two seasons ago, and I honestly didn't think this guy was ever going to get playing time. His overall was not that high. 79 overall to begin this season. 57 tackles, six sacks, six interceptions. Two of them were pick sixes. Will Smith coming back. His ratings are high. He had some struggle moments, but, well, he'll be fine. Keeper for the quarterback, Nehemiah Fowler. He's been a nice surprise this game, hasn't he? Ooh, that's mine. Stop and pop. Nehemiah Fowler having a breakout game here. He's got a second interception in the first half. Screen pass. That's all mine. Nehemiah Fowler. Wow. This guy is exploding on the scene. Two interceptions in the first half. Fowler will give us the ball right back though. Oh, and he fumbles it, but he picks it back up. Oh my, you're gonna give me a heart attack, man. Look at that coverage. Converted safety to linebacker. Fowler, that's 11 yard sack. His second one of the game, and he's got an interception. My good, this guy's gonna be an All-American. 
Oh, come on. You're making it too easy. He floated up the slant route. Feller had all sorts of time to run over there and pick that off. That's all Fowler's. Stay in bounds. It's a pick six right here. And he's going to get it. Pick six for the linebacker. And that's going to put the Pandas ahead by three points. That's all me. Fowler does it again. Another pick six. What's that three on the season for him? This is insane. <laughs> get him to the NFL. He's, he's not even a high overall, but get this man to the NFL. This guy can play. Who needs an offense when you got the UGF Panda defense? Absolute stud. I'm like, look at all these awards. Eric Tyson might have been a better tackler and a better like block shedder and whatnot, but Nehemiah Fowler, that speed is deadly at linebacker and that acceleration is just unfair. He's like a Mark Barron to me, I think. He, he'll be a lot of fun to use at the next level, that's for sure. Saying goodbye to guys that played here for a long time, played well, got us a national championship, first one in school history, we won't forget it. Sam McDonald went in the second round as we expected, and Jimmy Williams went into the fifth. So now for the first time ever, I have official things to go off when doing the Black Knight series. Yippee. I guarantee you there's nobody who predicted Sam McDonald to be the first one ever to be drafted into the NFL. Not even me. I didn't see this coming. And good for the Pandas, finally getting some talent into the NFL. Officially. Oh, freaking Alabama. Look at all of this. Good lord, man. And of course, LSU with their 299 overall centers. That's just dumb. Their dang kicker went in the fourth round. Oh my, look how many players from Georgia went in the first round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. I'm actually glad we didn't play them in the national championship now that I look at it. Jimmy Williams' brother went in the third round. We're getting a fullback 45 overall from Tennessee. No, thank you. Get that guy out of here. I don't want your walk-ons, Tennessee. Let's see where we are in top classes at the moment. Oh, we're at number three. Oh, ooh. You know what that means. We have a legitimate chance of getting the top class in the nation. Now we got a good chance to get an offensive tackle. So I'm putting a third of my points to him and then spreading out the rest amongst guys that I don't really need, but it'd be nice to have them if we could end up getting them. Let's freaking go. Mike Summers, the number one running back in the nation. Willie Green, 80 overall corner. Joe Lacey, the tackle we wanted. Wide receiver. Receiver Alexis Crawford, Justin Thomas, another good running back, and that free safety that I didn't really care to have. We already got two good linebackers, so Watkins and Allen Jones would have just been a bonus, honestly. Didn't really need Brian Jackson or Matt Perkins or Joe Fields, Lawrence Brooks. Michael Pierre would have been bonus. Same thing with Brian Leslie. That's good. I got all the guys that I really wanted. Sign the number one class. Suddenly I'm healed. My voice is back <clears throat> for a short time. It actually really hurts. The number one class in the nation. I finally did it. 20 total recruits, three of them five stars, nine four stars, six three stars, and two two stars. I don't even know where the two stars came from, but okay. Number one running back in the nation, number five athlete, number three corner, number one corner, number 20 tackle, number 67 athlete, number seven receiver, number 18 receiver, number five outside linebacker, number two MLB, number four outside side linebacker number six punter number two running back this is just dumb like we are going to dominate for many seasons to come i can't wait for it we're gonna dominate dual threat coach willie christensen where did this guy come from i don't remember scouting you alex roberts i don't know what to tell you man you're behind some top tier athletes so you may not be getting playing time poor michael grayson he's never getting playing time either <laughs> My goodness, 94-man coverage as a freshman. Willie Green absolutely is playing defense first. But, I mean, if we look at his offensive stats, too. 78 break tackle, 86 trucking, 81 carrying. Total of eight receivers. Only one of them is a senior. Daniel Sanders leads the helm. Bo Henderson, Damon Harris, A.J. Nichols, Brandon Butler, Kenny Hodges, Michael Grayson, and Jared Rogers, who's going to be immediately cut. Decided to put Willie Green over at corner. I feel like he gives the team the most value there. If we want to put him on offense at any point, that's always an option. Same thing with Ryan Covington and Brett Spurlock, the number one and number three corner in the nation. Yep, we're about to be white DBU. Here we go, boys. Training results. Ooh, Mike is now the highest rated player on the team, tied with Daniel Sanders and Will Smith at a 94 overall. 
Of course, Daniel Sanders has a lot to improve, only 76 awareness, so he's just going to keep getting better. 94 catching, 94 spec catch, 87 catch in traffic, and 98 route running. So he's not as good in a specific area as Sam McDonald, but he's probably better all around. 98 man coverage, 99 zone coverage. Are you kidding me, Mike? I'm calling Mike is going to be the first one drafted in the first round for our team ever. Will Smith also has amazing coverage ratings. Are you kidding me? 94 man coverage, 96 zone, 89 hit power. Reggie Manning, 93 overall. He actually has a better tackler rating than Will Smith. I'm actually shocked Connor Hoffman stayed for another year. It's probably that 51 awareness. And would you look at Andre Avery? Been sitting on the bench for a couple years. Now he's a junior. 90 throw power, 89 accuracy. Marcus Hawley, now a 91 overall. He's got 93 break tackle, 89 speed, 94 elusiveness. I think he'll probably get the starting job. Our kicker now has 93 kick power. Bo Henderson, man, he's become a beast. 99 route running, 94 catch in traffic, 93 spec catch, 94 jumping. If you thought Bo Henderson started to develop last year, I can't even imagine what he's going to do this year. I expect his numbers to double, maybe triple this season. Damon Harris, 86 overall. Let's check out his skills. 93 speed, 95 acceleration, 94 route running, 81 catching. That's all I need to see of him. Dan Vesiel is very good. He's a little bit faster than Marcus Hawley. Um, obviously can't break as many tackles, but he's good at trucking. He got some good elusiveness, ball carrier vision. He's just an all around great running back. So I'm going to give him a ton of carries this year. And Mike Holt, of course, continues to develop 84 overall. He's going to be an NFL player one day. AJ Nichols, the red zone threats. Still very tall, still pretty good at catching. Oh, this is what I was excited to see. Ken Burks, the freshman we redshirted. 83 overall, 90 speed, 89 acceleration, 79 agility, 92 throw power, and 82 accuracy. So that leaves us with a decision. Do we start Andre Avery, who has definitely had some reps before, has higher awareness, all that good stuff, or Ken Burks? who has insane talent. 90 speed at quarterback is just stupid fast. I'm gonna have to say Ken Burks is probably getting the starting job this season. I think we might be a run first football team again though. This should be exciting. Kenny Doherty up to a 76. You love to see it. Rory Alston who sat out his freshman season as well. He's gonna be an 80 overall red shirt freshman. Should be pretty good. 84 power moves, 83 finesse moves, 83 tackle. Aaron Hayes, Eddie Foster, that tag team down there at defensive tackle. Saquon Jones boosting up to a 78 overall. Will he get playing time though? A lot of talented freshmen. Something I'm actually gonna change this year is we're going to reset the skill tree. Taking all the points away from recruiting because i feel like at this point we are extremely overpowered would you like to reset the skill tree i ain't scared i'm doing it 24 upgrades available dump it all on a game manager yeah you only need stuff for setup plays boost it up passing matchups appear in pre-play coach cam give it to me teams start off hot in rivalry games and bowl games and championship games we start off very hot Call a timeout when losing by 14 or more to bump all your players to very hot. Hot players get performance bonuses. Game manager doesn't sound half bad. You stay very hot inside the final two minutes and overtime if the score difference is seven or less. Ah, oh, look at our wimpy scouting side. Level one over here. This is an era of change now. Now it's going to be... Kind of a dud recruiting year. At least we expect it to be because we don't have the resources. They cut our funding. They saw we won a national championship and they're like, you don't need recruiting points. Oh, look, we got Rhett Lashley as our offensive coordinator. So after thinking it over for a little bit, I think the best decision for us is to actually go independent for this next season. Let's say the SEC denied us. We beat them in the national championship and they're a little bit bitter. And the ACC is tired of us winning, so they booted us too. So now we're just floating in the abyss. Updated the ACC, so UCF's not in there. They're back into the American Conference. And I moved Maryland over to Independence, along with us, because nobody wants us. Sad. So the advantage of being an independent is now we can set our own schedule, make it as difficult as we want, no more schedule resets like last year. UGF is only as good as you coach them to be. Make sure you help these young men succeed. You worry about yourself, AD. I just got us a championship. In the preseason polls, we're number five in the nation. Time to redshirt some players. Willie Christensen, you're absolutely getting redshirted. There's no reason for you to see any action this year. In case anyone was curious, he has 85 throw power, 75 accuracy. Looks like Justin Thomas is going to be our return guy, so... 
Not gonna redshirt him. This may sound crazy, but I'm gonna redshirt Mike Summers. Number one running back in the nation, but we're gonna redshirt him. The only reason I'm not redshirting Justin Thomas is because he can give us value right away. I'm actually gonna redshirt Kenny Hodges just because I think we have a ridiculous amount of receivers, so it's gonna be tough for all of them to get playing time, but I think Brandon Butler can step in in a few situations every now and then. Michael Grayson's gotta work on his catching straight up like 68. That's the lowest on the roster right now. I'm also gonna redshirt Brett Spurlock. I mean, we have a ton of corners on the roster. Gotta have some longevity here, so choosing to redshirt him. Number one corner recruit in the nation. Also gonna redshirt the Juco transfer, Alexis Crawford, because Will Smith is gonna be playing this whole season. Gonna redshirt Antonio Owens, because he's a freshman behind two seniors. And I'm also gonna redshirt my punter, David West. You know, I think it's pretty obvious to me, but I'm gonna start Ken Burks this season at quarterback. That speed is just too dangerous. Marcus Hawley will be our starting running back. Dan Vessio will be his backup. Uh, we're going to be a run football team this year, so expect them both to get a ton of carries every single game. Receiver depth chart, Daniel Sanders at the top, Bo Henderson number two. Damon Harris will be in the slot at number three. AJ Nichols number four. Michael Grayson right now will be number five. And then the freshman Brandon Butler at number six. But all of this can change if people start dropping passes and whatnot. Tight end depth chart, pretty straightforward. Kenny Doherty at the top, that's all you really need to know. O-line's okay. We got uh, 81 overall left tackle, 91 left guard, 76 center, 85 right guard, and an 81 right tackle. So not as strong as last year, but it's not our worst offensive line that we've ever had. Left in will be Mike Holt. Right in will be Rory Alston. Look out for him. He's a big boy. Defensive tackle Aaron Hayes and Eddie Foster getting back together. Both of them All-Americans in the past, so I'm expecting them to have good seasons again. And then our linebacker core is going to be a lot of freshmen. Thomas Moore at left outside linebacker. Middle linebacker will be Connor Hoffman and then Shane Frederick behind him. The other outside linebacker will be Taylor Smart, another freshman. Cornerback depth chart, Mike, Ryan Covington, Willie Green, Saquon Jones, all extremely young players, except for Mike, of course. He's a longtime veteran. I always forget he's 6'4". Dude is absolutely massive. Kick returns this year will be Justin Thomas, the freshman with 96 speed. Welcome, everybody, to the biggest madman schedule you've probably ever seen. Or maybe not. Maybe you're crazier than I am. But here's what we got here. I scheduled the two games that I wanted to have last year. Boise State, we're going to play on the blue field. And then next, we're going to play Washington at the Cowboys kickoff game in Dallas. And then we're going to start a stretch of road games. Almost all ranked teams. Almost always on the road. We played two home games all year. Southern Miss and Georgia. The only team we've played before on this schedule is Georgia. Everybody else a brand new team, and then whoever we play in our bowl game or our national championship, if we somehow make it through this gauntlet. And another thing alongside this, this makes recruiting super hard, like ridiculously hard because you can only schedule two visits all year long. You've got Georgia and you've got Southern Miss. Everybody else, it's a road game. It's like a tour of other campuses, basically, is what we're going to be doing this year. So it's going to be fun for me. Hopefully you guys enjoy it because it's going to be more challenging than what we did last year. But we got that A-plus strength of schedule. So if we come out on top on all these games, well, of course, we're going to be number one in the nation. Holy moly. Coach Prestige A-plus. I guess our conference Prestige is A-plus because we just scheduled a bunch of ranked opponents. We don't even really have a conference. We're independent, so it really should give us like an F. Right? Championship contender, A+. Plus. Stadium atmosphere, A+, plus, of course. Still got the 20-game home win streak. Coach stability is now all the way up to an A-. minus. Academic prestige, C+. Plus. Athletic facility, C+. Plus. Those take forever to upgrade. But finally, we got some dang pandas drafted. One in the second and one in the fifth. Television exposure is a C-. Minus. Program tradition is D+, plus, and our campus lifestyle is still in the toilet at a D-. Minus. I'm keeping my recruiting board kind of small this year, and especially because we, like, dropped down our recruiting rank down to no level one. <laughs> so we got to work our way back up. We can only scout 25%, so, yeah, it takes us longer to scout dudes. Five preseason All-Americans. 14 preseason All-Conference. We're not even in a conference. What the? Our preseason All-Americans are Daniel Sanders. Probably a crap ton of people on defense. Connor Hoffman, Mike, Will Smith, Reggie Manning. All independents. <laughs> That's a bit cheap, isn't it? Like it, It's like four different teams. Well, that's pretty much all I have for this video. It's 4 a.m. I'm very tired. My voice is about to explode. But I hope you guys enjoyed the offseason. I hope you guys 
are excited for the new changes and excited for the new season ahead. But anyways, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. You're all legends in my book. And as for me, I am Drew Morris, big old Drewski, not the expert. And I'll see all you guys in my next video. Peace. For the national championship. For all the marbles, what we've all worked for. For Adamo, for Horton, for everybody.